Keith Gillings and uh, I uh, live locally to uh, St Mary's, uh, a short distance away and uh, I was uh, first involved in the, uh, the uh, planting of and design of this uh, wildflower area um, about February in 2020, so just before the first of these lockdowns that we went into. Uh, up until that stage I've been quite busy uh, with uh, being retired, looking after grandchildren and also the other thing uh, I do is volunteer for the National Trust in one of their gardens uh, nearby. But of course lockdown came along which meant I had a, a lot of spare time and uh, we've done the basic planning. Uh, so myself uh, along with uh, uh, the Reverend Jill and her husband Steve, we got on and actually did the, the main part of the plant in itself. Originally, we were going to put down a, a wildflower turf, uh, but we found that there was a much better product for us, which comes as a big bale of, uh, of soil with all the seeds mixed into it already. And you lay it down and uh, it was much easier for us to make these, uh, these curved shapes of the labyrinth itself. And uh, then it was just a case of watering. And in 2020, there was a lot of dry period. And so the Reverend Jill and her husband were out here watering every night just to keep the flowers uh, um, sustained with some moisture. The plot we're on itself uh, used to be uh, where the predecessor of uh, St Mary's uh, was. There was two huts back here in the 1950s which were turned into a church and into a, a hall. And, uh, and so some of the dug area that we went through were actually part of the foundations of, of those particular items when uh, this was an area which was taken over from when it was a US Air Force Air Base during the Second World War. Uh, we've got uh, various planting areas. Uh, main one is focusing on wildflowers uh, and this was uh, basically brought in as I say as this large big bag of compost about the size of a big builder's bag a cubic meter and then spread out thinly trodden down and then as I say watered and then we just sat back and waited and waited and waited and it was about a month and a bit before we first had our uh, major growths and then all of a sudden we had our first yellow flower a field mustard. It was absolutely glorious and it went on the website and we, we celebrated uh, this single flower. Now for the same time as we first saw those flowers we've got quite a, a, a self-set seed uh, from this large uh, uh, amount that we sowed last year because it all gradually came on and it was running about a month late so by the time we got into late July we were seeing about the same as we've got here at the moment. Poppies which have just started to come through uh, with the vibrant red have just started to come into uh, into their own and looking at the number of poppies that we've got self-seeded we are going to be well and truly uh, uh, having a good display at the front of the uh, of the church here. The beauty of this particular location is that when you're working here uh, you're actually near a road, I don't know if you heard the traffic just now, and it's also the route for some of the school children going to school. And every morning uh, I'd be out here before it got too hot, digging the ground or, or doing raking or cutting the grass, and there would be youngsters passing by with their parents and we'd have a, a little bit of chat. One of them, uh, I did say this church has been here uh, uh, almost as long as I have, and I had to correct him to make sure that he didn't think I was actually from the Tudor period, but uh, that was okay. But that's what he was studying at school at the time. So we've had uh, quite a number of youngsters getting involved uh, doing planting. Our current uh, planting scheme at the moment is purely letting the wildflowers do what they do best. So we'll cut these down um, at the end of mid-August to the end of August let them lie on the ground for a little bit so the seed actually falls down to the ground itself and then cut all of that away because we don't want to improve this ground uh, because the wildflowers don't enjoy that at all and then uh, we'll sit back and wait over the winter and to see what happens next year. To prevent this just being uh, a boring space uh, during that period when everything is cut down we've got some lavender interplanted amongst this we've also got some rosemary interplanted and we should have some cornice, uh, which is the old dogwoods,
just starting here. So we'll get some nice uh, variable uh, uh, growths uh, coming through and that will sustain us mainly during the winter period. We've also got some uh, cherries on the uh, on the wall over there. So we've got uh, two cherries which should give us uh, a edible cherry, providing we can be beat the birds to actually picking them. And they're going to be fan trained against the wall to give that lovely background. And I've just started at, um, last year, I took cuttings from a fig tree and that should turn into uh, a fig on the back wall here because it's nice and, and, uh, and not a very nice position and figs will actually love it. So that's where we're going at the moment is uh, to get our fig tree in place. All things which have got themes which uh, relate back to the likes of the Psalm 23 and basically to, the, to our uh, religion. My name is William. The flower is the poppy that's just over there. Uh -huh. Lovely. Um, I like taking photos of it. It's a really good one to take photos of. Yeah, over there I've done a couple of plantings over there. Um, I like to use it for calming myself down if I've had a busy day. So in last year you were doing a fair bit of the planting on these sides because Sally, one of our uh, church members, has provided us a number of marigolds and she's done uh, some uh, cornflowers and those are the ones we're putting in today but she provided this lovely and it almost looked like a beach didn't it yeah as the marigolds great like a yellow beach went around with the blues at the back mm -hmm. 